Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So today's Let's Brew deck tech is built around a commander that truly lives up to its name. It is boundless. There are endless possibilities of different kinds of decks that you can build around it. But the direction that was chosen for this deck tech today, I am really excited about. So let's jump into it. So today's episode comes to your courtesy of Trenton, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. And I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Trenton. And for the personalized deck tech, Trenton chose Morph on the Boundless with a focus on Eldrazi Tribal, focusing specifically on Devoid Eldrazi. So, Morph on the Balance is a 6-6 six, six Shapeshifter for 7 with Changeling, so it's every creature type. As it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, and then spells of the chosen type you cast cost Wooburg less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay, and then other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus 1 plus 1. So, Morophon is an incredibly flexible tribal commander that can pretty much be a tribal commander for any kind of tribe. Now, what makes it really cool with Eldrazi is that Eldrazi are generally colorless. In fact, the only legendary Eldrazi out there are colorless, so you can't really make a complete Eldrazi tribal deck because there are those Devoid Eldrazi out there that, while they are technically colorless, do have a mana pip in their cost of, you know, green or blue or white or black or red. All the mana pips, anyways. So they cannot fit, actually, in a colorless deck, though the spells are technically colorless. I know it's kind of confusing-ish. Anyways, so Morophon is the perfect commander for an Eldrazi tribal deck that wants to include those Devoid Eldrazi. So Morphon's going to be a 6-6 Eldrazi for you that pumps all your other Eldrazi by plus one plus one, so an Anthem, essentially. And then also, and probably more importantly, it's going to reduce the cost of your Devoid Eldrazi by a good amount. Again, if they've got multiple pips in their mana cost, it's going to pretty much reduce all those pips, you know, as long as they're different pips. <laughs> Anyways, let's jump into some of the cards that we're going to include in this deck. So let's start things off. Obviously, you want Ramp in this deck, but you're also going to want some mana reducers like Herald of Kozlek and Conduit of Ruin. Both are Eldrazi that can help make your Eldrazi le cost less to cast. So Herald of Kozlek is a 2-4 Eldrazi drone with Devoid, so this card has no color. It's only going to cost you 1 to cast because, again, Morophon's going to make its pips essentially just go away. It says colorless spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. So now all your other Eldrazi not only, you know, cost less to cast because of Morophon, but also because of Herald. Conduit of Ruin helps out in a different way. It's a 5-5 five, 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 five Eldrazi for 6. It says whenever you cast it, you can search your library for a colorless creature card with converted mana cost 7 or greater. Reveal it, shuffle your library, and put that card on top of it. And then the first creature spell you cast each turn costs 2 less to cast. So this is essentially a creature tutor for something pretty big. It's going to put it on top, not in your hand, but still very effective. And then it's going to reduce the first creature spell you cast each turn by 2. So it doesn't help with every single spell that you cast, but throughout the game, this can add up to a ton. So again, Morophon's reducing. This is reducing as well. Now, outside of ramping and reducing mana, let's move on to some other Eldrazi that can help us out with card selection and card advantage. Catacomb Sifter is the first one that comes to mind. When it comes into play, you get an Eldrazi Scion that you can sacrifice for mana. And it says, whenever another creature you control dies, scry one. So, whenever any of your Eldrazi die, including the ones that you just sacrifice for mana, you get to scry one. Now, that isn't card advantage, but it is card selection. It can really help you out throughout the game, getting dead cards off the top of your library. Deep Fathom Skulker is another one. It says, whenever another creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. And you can also pay three in a colorless and target creature can't be blocked this turn. So now whenever you're hitting your opponents with your Eldrazi, you're also going to be drawing cards. And Bringer is a repeatable draw effect that can be really good in a deck like this. It's a 5-5. It untaps during each other player's untap step. It can tap to ping a creature or player for one. You can pay a colorless and tap it and target creature can't attack or block this turn. And you can pay two and tap it to draw a card. Or two, I should say, colorless, colorless to tap it and draw a card. So this is kind of like a Swiss Army knife Eldrazi that can help you with a lot of things. It can ping down a small creature, it can ping down a player, and you can also make a creature not be able to attack, so, you know, you can protect yourself or not be able to block so you can get something through. But you're probably going to most use this for two mana, essentially draw a card each turn. So, yeah, that can be a fantastic effect. It can really help you uh, throughout the game, uh, you know, keep your hand full, and then you also utilize it in other ways if you need to. 
Next up, let's talk about getting some Eldrazi tokens out there. This deck can easily flood the board with Eldrazi tokens with something like an Awakening Zone. So at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this creature, add colors to your mana pool. Now, obviously, these tokens are small, but they can get bigger. Outside of Morophon, we do have other Anthems in the deck. We'll talk about those in a bit. But still, just being able to have these kind of Eldrazi flood the field, be able to utilize them for different things. We can use them for mana, we can use them for chump blocking. Again, once later in the game, we might be able to even use them for attacking as well. Next up, there's Brood Monitor. When it enters the battlefield, you put three 1-1 one, one Colossal Eldrazi Scion creature tokens onto the battlefield. They have Sacrifice this creature at one your mana pool. So we do have token producers. We have token producers as enchantments. We've got token producers as an ETB effect or an LTB effect like Sifter of Skulls. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 one, one Colossal Eldrazi Scion creature token onto the battlefield. It has sacrifice this creature, add colors to your mana pool. So this can be a fantastic way to replace any of our creatures that die. If someone board wipes, we're going to still have an army of Eldrazi out there. They might be small, but again, we do have ways to make them bigger throughout the game, or we can just utilize them for mana to help get other things out. Next up, let's talk about some Eldrazi that can help us out ping down players, reduce their life outside of combat, like in a Flare Drone or Nettle Drone. Flare Drone says whenever another creature you control, or colorless creature you control enters the battlefield under your control, target opponent loses one life. We're going to be having a lot of colorless creatures enter the battlefield. Again, this entire deck is essentially just colorless creatures, either creatures with Devoid or just colorless creatures in general. Uh, and then also, again, all those Eldrazi Spawn or Eldrazi Scion creatures when they're coming into play, they're going to be draining people as well because, again, it does not specify non-token with that. Nettle Drone can tap to deal one damage to each opponent, and then whenever we cast a color spell, it untaps. So again, whether we're casting a color spell or a spell to void, it's going to untap, and this can just ping our opponents down. Again, that is one damage to each opponent, so basically three damage per tap. And then, yeah, just untapping, tapping again, and this can deal a lot of damage throughout the game to get our opponents down. We've also got some enchantments that can help us out in different ways as well with Molten Nursery. It says whenever you cast a color spell, Molten Nursery deals one damage to our creature or player. So this is another way to ping our opponents down. This is an enchantment, so it's going to be a little harder on the battlefield, harder to get rid of. Mana Maze can be especially brutal for our opponents. It says players can't play spells that share a color with the spell last played this turn. Now, this really isn't going to affect us too much because this deck isn't running very many spells that have a color because we just have basically a ton of, again, either Devoid or, or Colorless spells in this deck, but our opponents probably aren't going to be so lucky, and basically they can't just keep casting the same colored spell in a turn. So if they're playing a mono-colored deck, they're going to be in big trouble, not being able to cast multiple spells in a turn, essentially, unless they've got artifacts or whatnot. Next up, let's move on to some ways that we can win through combat, like a Ruination Guide can really help us out. It says other colorless creatures you control get plus one plus zero, yeah, even just plus one plus where zero can be huge for a deck like this. Again, we're going to be making a lot of Eldrazi tokens, and just giving them an extra little bump up can really help dish out some damage. Etchings of the Chosen is something that can really help as well. When it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. Obviously, we're choosing Eldrazi. Creatures of the Chosen type get plus one plus one, and we can pay one to sacrifice a creature of the Chosen type, and target creature control gains indestructible until end of turn. So this is an anthem that is incredibly valuable because we can also use it as a way to protect our key pieces. Again, we're going to be having a lot of tokens on the field, so we can just, you know, pay one, sacrifice one of those tokens, and then save some of our key pieces, or save one of those key pieces. Again, on top of just being an anthem, which can really help us. Again, with both of these in play, plus our commander, that's what, plus three, plus two to everything? And yeah, that can really make a difference, especially when we have something like Vela the Nightclad in play. Not only does she have Intimidate, but she also says other creatures you control have Intimidate, which means that this creature can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. And here's the thing. Our creatures don't have a color. Our, all of our creatures, uh, except for, you know, Bella or whatnot, all of our Eldrazi are either, you know, colorless in general or they have Devoid, which means that they're essentially just colorless. So, yeah, they just basically can't be blocked except by artifact creatures. So... Yeah, good luck blocking any of our creatures, and yeah, we can just swing out with our token army, with you know, our army of Eldrazi, and take our opponents out. And on top of that, she also has, whenever Vel the Nightclad or another creature you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So now if there's a board wipe, yeah, our opponent's going to be drained for a ton. Or even, you know, if we just start sacrificing some of our Eldrazi spawn or scions, we're going to be able to drain out our opponents as well with this. So yeah, Vela can be a huge card for this deck. And if all else fails, we can just utilize some of our really big Eldrazi, like Artisan of Kozlek, Ulamog's Crusher, and Bane of Balaged. Though we don't get a reduction for Morophon on them, they can still be pretty brutal in an Eldrazi deck, or any kind of deck, essentially. Artisan of Kozlek, whenever you cast a spell, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, so it's an instant reanimation, as well as Annihilator 2. 
Yeah, Annihilator is a pretty brutal thing. Basically, when you attack, that player has to sacrifice two permanents. Umog's Crusher has to attack each turn. Oh no, it has got Annihilator too as well. And then Bane of Balaged basically has Annihilator, except those cards are exiled. So yeah, these can be pretty brutal cards. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist on this deck. So if you're looking for the entire deck list, go and find that in the description below. And while you're at it, go ahead and comment and let me know what your thoughts on this deck are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.